thing about mathematics in the Dark Ages is that it wasn't really a thing. See, the Dark Ages or Middle Ages or Medieval or, and whatnot, they didn't tend to have a lot of mathematics in the whole branch of education kind of thing. In fact, I dare say it was a period of time in which the math world gained almost nothing in the field, and it may have even affected the course of human history. It raises questions like, where would we be if we hadn't gone through this phase? What would history be like if we hadn't taken the path? Both kind of the same question, but you do kind of wonder. Although the world may have laid dormant of this education, I can just imagine the excitement of my childhood math class. If we didn't have to learn math, <laughs> that Alice Cooper would have been stoked about this notion. During this time period, the math of ancient Greece was considered pagan by the church, which reigned supreme in power. So, trying to rebel probably wouldn't have been a very good idea during this time. I should clarify. The Dark Ages were a time period ranging from the 6th to the 13th century in Western Europe, following the fall of the Roman Empire. It was during this time that the church put aside the study of mathematics and physical sciences, and instead ruled in favor of the study of theology. It was during the 7th century that intellect was at its lowest. It was from the 5th to the 11th century that the barbarians swept the lands and ravaged Western and Central Europe which merely prolonged the absence of mathematical and philosophical advances. Monasteries were some of the few places where mathematical documents were preserved and stored, until they would later be rediscovered during the Renaissance period. It was the monks at this time that were some of the few whom were able to study. As for math, the best that can be said is that the work of the ancient Greece were well preserved by them in the Byzantine Empire. Fortunately, not all hope was lost. From this time period arose Fibonacci. Yes, that's right, the genius who created the number sequence and spiral. He sprang forth and shared his keen intellect with the world. He could most easily explain his discovery via the explanation involving the multiplying of rabbits. But the real question is, do you really want that image in your head? That's a topic best saved for another time. Now if we expand the Dark Ages outside of Western Europe and embark upon a journey further, we find that math has not been entirely forgotten. The Islamic people studied the mathematics of ancient Greece. One such revolutionary mathematician was al khwarizmi Wait a second, that's not old Al. Okay, now, I'm not implying anything by this, but you can't deny they do look kind of similar. It's gotta be the eyebrows. Anyway, he as well as others is recognized for calculating the circumference of the Earth. He is also known for his work in the advancement of algebra and trigonometry. He also wrote a book on his works in the calculations of algebra, which translates as The Compendious Book of Calculation by Completion and Balancing. While most of Europe was in the dark, it was the Arabic countries that were mathematically thriving. It wasn't until Pope Sylvester II came into power of the Roman Catholic Church in the late 900s that math began to resurface. <laughs> in fact, he's credited as the reason that math came back into study. He particularly influenced the study of Arab Greco-Roman arithmetic and astronomy. He is also credited for reintroducing the armillary sphere. He even reintroduced Europe to the abacus and decimal numeral system using the Arabic numerals. Soon after the Dark Ages came to an end, math was rediscovered and studied mainstream. It just makes you wonder how our world would be different if we hadn't gone through this period of mathematical depression. 
Would we be more advanced in technology? Would we have a better grasp on the known universe? We may never know. But one thing is for sure. Humanity needs mathematics in order to continue to move.